Niners hope to extend their five-game winning streak. San Francisco was looking to maintain their home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs, and the Vikings could get help today from the Packers to wrap it all up. And hello again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, along with Randy Cross. And if you had to pick one team, this is a pivotal game, particularly for the Minnesota Vikings. They have been struggling a little lately, not happy with their passing game. And that is why Rich Gannon is back at quarterback after being benched three games ago. What's the effect, Randy? Well, you know, Gannon seems like a very confident quarterback. The Vikings are very confident. But I think there's a lot of whistling through the graveyard in that confidence. This is a team that needs to get off to an early start and get some momentum going. And it's a quarterback that needs some early momentum. For the 49ers, they won't have Harris Barton. Ralph, Ralph Tam will start there. Ricky Waters won't play much. Ampli will play for him. But remember one thing about the 49ers. They have a lot of incentive in this game. This is a team that always thinks more is better, and more wins are always better. They want the home field advantage. All right, Randy, what's your breakdown on the cross-examination today? Well, I think you got to look at it offensively, edge of the Niners. Defense, edge of the Vikings. Special teams, Niners. Team speed, Niners. Intangibles, though, I think they've got an edge right now they haven't had a long time here in Minnesota, and that's the head coach. Denny Green will have this team pumped and ready to go in this game, and they know how important this is for the rest of the season, for the next six weeks, they hope. Two stints as an assistant coach with the 49ers. Denny Green has been thinking of this game for several weeks, and the Vikings will get the ball first. They won the toss. Mike Kofer will be kicking off. Darren Nelson and Keith Henderson are back deep. Nelson is on the left. The Vikings have not lost two in a row all year, and they're trying to avoid that today. And it'll be Darren Nelson in the end zone returning for Minnesota. Stumbles a bit and winds up with a nifty return to the 26-yard line. So Rich Gannon, 7-3 and three as a starter, back at quarterback. As Dennis Green says, I'm going to try to find one quarterback to trigger the offense. Zimmerman, McDaniel, Loudermilk, Habib, and Irwin, a fine front defense, uh, offensive line. Jordan, the tight end. Terry Allen. Anthony Carter has to handle a lot of the burden with Chris Carter out on injured reserve. Hassan Jones and Joe Johnson, the other wide receivers. First and 10 on the 26. And they start out with three wide receivers. Gannon will throw on first down. And it's nearly intercepted by Don Griffin. And there was a mix-up in the pattern, apparently, down the field. Defensively for the 49ers, and Michael Carter, who did not play against the Dolphins, is back in at nose tackle in their base defense. Linebacker to watch besides Tim Harris is Bill Romanowski, who plays on all of the many defenses of the 49ers. And in the secondary, Davis and Griffin, who nearly had the pick, at cornerback Dana Hall and David Whitmore, who had fine games against Miami at safety. And this is an offense Minnesota has got to utilize their screen game against this aggressive defense of the Niners. Second down and 10, four defensive linemen up front for San Francisco. Terry Allen out of the backfield with the reception, bangs hard into Griffin, and maybe close to a, a first down, picks up seven yards. And this is exactly the way the Minnesota Vikings want to attack this defense with the screen. And if you're going to screen, you go to the left. Because over there, you've got Randall McDaniel, a great pulling, running offensive guard. You have Zimmerman. And these guys know how to get out in front of a running back and block. And if you're running screens and you've got corners and safeties making the tackles, you're going to get at least, at least six yards. And a good block by McDaniel on that play. Brings up third down and three. Minnesota fifth in the NFL on third down conversion. All three wide receivers to the right. And Gannon is in trouble. He can run, and he'll have a first down. If Randall Cunningham and Steve Young are the top two running quarterbacks in the league, Rich Gannon probably is number three as he picks up five. And you see Rich Gannon there. This is the kind of start Gannon has to get off to, something that gives him a little confidence. Throwing good completions, that gives you confidence. Taking advantage of good coverage by making something happen for your team is what Gannon needs to do in this game. He's got to be the spark. He's got to be the rallying point. He's got to be the guy they look to in the huddle and say he can make it happen. Vikings with a first down on the 38. Garen Veris has checked in the game defensively for San Francisco. And Gannon looking to throw, and this pass is intercepted by Griffin. And it's a turnover, and the 49ers will have the ball in Viking territory as Don Griffin, who really not nearly had an interception on the first play, picks this one off. His fourth of the season. 
Well, he should have had the first interception, and here it's just a good job of a cornerback sitting on a pattern because he sees the pattern coming. He's done his study, and as soon as this ball's released, it is Griffin, not Hassan Jones, breaking on the ball and making the offensive-defensive reception. Interception by Griffin, and the 49ers have first down on the Viking 49. Throwing on first down is Young, and the pass is to the tight end. Brent Jones up the middle, and a good gain of seven on first down. Del Rio on the stop. Steve Young, the number one rated passer in the NFL, but the Vikings are worried about his running abilities, will lead the 49ers. That is their defensive unit and will bring you up to date on their offensive alignment after this play. It'll be second down and three at the 42-yard line. Jerry Rice lines up to the left. Taylor to the right. And a play fake. Young's pass. And it's caught by Taylor. And it will be enough for a first down. Gain of eight yards. Let's check the 49ers offensive line and the big change as Randy mentioned Ralph Tam who has not played tackle since high school replaces the injured Harris Barton. Amp Lee starts his second straight game. Ricky Waters could see action. Rathman the fullback and Rice the record breaker last week along with Taylor and a lot of pressure will be on Tam today. And he gets a speed guy in Al Noga. If you want your first assignment, you want it against a slugger, not a speed guy. Amp Lee on first down. Tries to drive his way close to the 30-yard line and the Vikings stack it up and a gain of three yards. Viking defensively, outstanding defensive line and the 49ers have to be concerned with the pass rushing of Chris Dolman and where he lines up. The linebackers, Carlos Jenkins, Jack Del Rio, and Mike Merriweather, who made the last tackle. In the secondary, the change is Vincey Glenn for Felix Wright, although Glenn and Wright had shared the free safety position this year. George Seifert, who has a marvelous record as coach of the Niners. Second down and seven from the 31-yard line. Penalty marker down, pass is caught by Rathman. And he'd be about a yard and a half short of a first down, but there's a penalty marker down. Jack Del Rio and then Carlos Jenkins on the tackle. Johnny Greer is our referee, and that flag will be a five-yard penalty against the 49ers. And what that really does, that brings a guy like Mike Hofer into the equation, and he doesn't, I think, have the range or consistency. Illegal motion, 22, offense. Still second down. With Amp Lee, it'll still be second down and long. And this is a situation that a Chris Dolman just loves. Sure, you can screen. Yeah, you can run a draw. But this defensive line, as you showed in NFL today, about the defensive line maintaining their passing lanes, maintaining their rush. Well, Dolman is a guy that doesn't care a darn thing about lanes. He just goes after the quarterback any way he can. And he's on the blind side against the lefty. Four wide receivers in the lineup. And it's going to be Ant Lee with Guy McIntyre blocking. And Lee is tackled from behind by Audrey McMillan. And Carlos Jenkins in on the play. Hold Lee to a gain of four yards. Dolman, a factor almost in every play. Let's watch Dolman here working against this double sweep. As the fullback, I should say, the wide receiver, Odessa Turner, tries to cut block him, doesn't get him. And that's really the extra added attraction of a Chris Dolman. He's got that lateral speed and the ability to get down the line. You're much better off trying to block Dolman with a Tom Rathman, a fullback. You see Dolman heading over to the offensive right side trying to get that matchup against Tan. 49ers best in the league on third down conversion. But it's third and long this time. There's Young, and he's going to try to run for the yardage. And he's going to be held short. And it's Henry Thomas who made the tackle to prevent Young from getting the first down. And Mike Coper will come in to try to put the 49ers in front. Nice job downfield coverage-wise on the 49er receivers. Forces Young to do this, which is get out. But they were in a zone defense. So the defensive backs and linebackers were able to fill up quick. See Dolman working on Ralph Tam. Round one to Ralph Tam there doing a good job against Dolman. Remember, Dolman's rushing over there in a very unusual spot. He's not used to being over there. I think they're better off letting Noga do it from over there. This would be Mike Coker's longest field goal of the season. 46-yard attempt. It's a low snap, and the kick is long enough 
And the kick is good. So Mike Hofer with his longest field goal of the season, 46 yards. And with 9.25 remaining in the first quarter, it's 3 to nothing, San Francisco. 49ers have the lead, taking advantage of the Don Griffin interception, and the Niners have done that a lot this year. Well, we'll make this 114 and move them now into second place and ahead of Minnesota off of that three points by Mike Kofer, and it bodes well for Kofer. Kofer is a kicker that needs to get off to a good start. He's had a problem this season and last season. When things start going bad, he starts pushing and he starts hooking, and to have his longest field goal of the season so far, this early like this, really pumps up a kicker. They're much like golfers. If a golfer can get off to a good start, he figures he can have a good round. Gopher will kick off, and back deep, it's Nelson and Keith Henderson. And this will be a line drive kick, tough to handle, and Darren Nelson will down it in the end zone, and then the Vikings will start from the 20-yard line. It'll be interesting to see how Rich Gannon reacts. He was very shaky the first series for Minnesota. Well, actually, Gannon's going to be a guy who's going to get a little pressure, and he was able to scramble for a nice first down. He was able to flip that ball off to Terry Allen. But more importantly, he's got to get the coordination with the wide receivers. They don't have Chris Carter in there. He broke his collarbone against the Rams, and he's on injured reserve. He needs to get coordination with the receivers, and specifically the former big play guy who is now their big play guy is Anthony Carter. Carter is split wide to the right. Hassan Jones is in the slot, and he goes in motion. On first down, Terry Allen dives to about the 25. Allen has been the workhorse. He gained 82 yards and scored two touchdowns against the Eagles last Sunday. And this is the Niner defense that is not ranked number one in the NFL against the rush. I mean, they've stomped on people with the rush, but, you know, I always look at that stat kind of funny. I guess I was an offensive player, so I think, well, unless you're in New Orleans or a big physical defense, the reason nobody can run against you is they figure they can throw against you. And the 49ers are ranked 28th against the pass. Two tight ends. The strong side is to the right. Second down and five. Here's a blitz on Gannon, and he leads it, and he hits Steve Jordan, the tight end, out of the backfield. That'll be enough for a first down for the Vikings. Dana Hall making the tackle. They picked the blitz up well. Jack Burns came to Minnesota this year with Danny Green from the Washington Redskins, and the Redskins don't utilize their tight ends really that much. A lot of that has to do with the fact they don't have a great receiving tight end like a Steve Jordan. I think Jack Burns is lucky to be able to really integrate him into this offense. See Burns there with the headset on right in the middle of the screen. First down on the 31-yard line. Again, a double tight end alignment and pressure on Gannon. And this time the pass thrown behind Jordan is incomplete. He was open. And, you know, we talked earlier in the, in the open there of, of the game talking about the whistling through the graveyard thing about the confidence of the quarterback and the confidence of the team. And we've seen Rich Gannon throw some balls right now early, a couple of which Two of which should have been intercepted, one that was, and now one right behind him. He needs to go to the shorter drops, the confidence passes, dump them off, and don't forget the screen pass. And Roger Craig is making his first appearance of this game. Second down and 10. Darren Nelson also joins him in the backfield. Craig gets the carry, number 33, with blockers in front of him. And you know that Roger Craig is pumped up coming into this game. He came back from arthroscopic knee surgery and miraculously in less than two weeks had a twisted ankle but would not miss this game for the world. A gain of nine yards for Craig. We have two real physical, real quick pulling type guards. McDaniel here for the Vikings. Guy McIntyre for the Niners. Let's watch McDaniel. A guard that can do these types of things is irreplaceable. Can get out in front of the running back can clear out that first blocker. If you can get that first uh, first defender out of the way of the running back, especially a guy like Craig, you buy your back at least four or five yards. Craig comes out. It'll be third down and one as Terry Allen is the lone running back. And on third and one, a rollout pass and a fine catch. And that'll be enough for the first down. Joe Johnson, the former Washington Redskin, on a good catch and a gain of four yards. And this is just a pure speed play to mess up the coverage. Johnson was in motion, went behind Gannon, and quickly spurt, spurts right out into the flat. And there is no way that Hanks can get over there and make that tackle before they get a first down. Another good job of game planning. You know how the coverage of the other team is, and you take advantage of it. 
Joe Johnson acquired by trade from the Redskins, and that's the kind of offense that Dennis Green is modeling. First and 10 at the 45. Four wide receivers. Jake Reed is in the game. And up the middle is Allen, and he moved the pile for about three yards. As the Vikings get close to midfield, Mike Walter and Kevin Fagan make the tackle on Allen. And that 49er defense, I think, is at its strongest in the middle, especially with Michael Carter back at the nose position. You've got guys like Dennis Brown and Pierce Holt and Kevin Fagan and Michael Carter, and you see Ted Washington there, number 97. They're a defense you're better off outflanking outside and hoping you get some blocks out on the outside than trying to pound those big guys inside. They come up with four defensive linemen on second down and seven. Cannon with a quick toss. Hassan Jones. Dives forward, he's in 49er territory. And a gain of four yards. Merton Hanks and Eric Davis on the play, and Hassan Jones will have to bear some of the burden, too. We mentioned Anthony Carter with Chris out of there, but Jones could be a player as well. And what we've seen in the last few plays, Dick, is Rich Gannon going to the confidence passes. The Joe Johnson little quick spurter into the flat. A little quick one there to Hassan Jones. Start building. Get some little victories. Build some confidence. And make the defense try to sort of suck up and stop the easy things. That'll open the things up down the field. On that four-man front, Martin Harrison, number 56, to the top of your screen for the Niners. Third down and three. And there's the rollout. Big pressure. And this time, Joe Johnson dropped the ball. Gannon had to get rid of it in a hurry because of the safety blitz by Thane Gash. And it was actually a good job, good job by Gannon getting that off. You know, see Joe Johnson's a little disappointed because from the left of the screen, here comes a 31 missile coming right into Gannon's face. He flips it off, and that's just purely a little concentration problem. The ball's a little behind him. That's definitely a ball Joe Johnson should have caught. Harry Newsom will punt for the Vikings, and Alan Grant goes back deep for the 49ers. Newsom, leading punter in the NFC. And it's going to be Grant at the 20, and that's all. 28-yard kick, but the 49ers will be at their 20s. Van Waiters and David Bavaro. We've seen some more today against the Vikings, but now the 49ers have first down on the 19-yard line. Steve Young's pass in and out of the hands of Taylor. It'll be interesting to see how the 49ers, when they have a drive situation now, work with Tam at tackle in place of Barton. Well, I think for the Minnesota Vikings, it's almost a given they're going to get some pressure up front, Dick, but more importantly for them is how they're going to maintain these zone defenses. And a nice job there of Del Rio getting back into his zone and immediately turning in the direction of Taylor and closing on him, and I think really distracting Taylor a little bit and causing him to drop that ball. This time, Taylor and Rice line up to the left. Second down and 10, and the handoff is to Amp Lee. And he gets a hole up the middle and carries out to the 25-yard line where Del Rio and Al Noga combine to make the tack on, uh, tackle on Lee, who should do well on artificial turf. Although, in talking with him yesterday, Randy, he says, I really don't like playing on it, but he should do better with this surface. Well, nobody in their right mind likes playing indoors like this on this fake grass. This stuff is terrible for your body, but if there's an edge for an Ampley running game, it's because of his speed and his cutting ability. I mean, people that watch him at Florida State saw him make some unbelievable moves, and he does it even better here on the turf. Third down and four. Two tight ends for the 49ers. Young. His pass, Jerry Rice has it, and he's got a first down. So the first pass to Rice is successful. Carl Lee defending good for 13, and that's always a good sign when Rice catches his first pass. That's 109 consecutive games for Jerry Rice of catching a pass, and you don't stop this guy. You, you hope to contain him, but you do not stop him because there's too much football field and too much ability in that one body to stop him completely. You know, I think from the Minnesota Vikings standpoint, though, on that play, it's got to be a positive. They gave up the first down, but they were all over Steve Young. Consistent pressure will make Young throw balls he doesn't want to. And another streak continues for Jerry Rice. Jamie Williams is the tight end. And Al Noga gets to Steve Young. And the crowd cheering the Viking defense. They really made this team live the first half of the season. 
and watch the front four specifically. Keep an eye right on the inside. Coming over the right tackle, Ralph Tam pulls. Jamie Williams blocks down. It's supposed to be what the Niners call a fake 18 bob, which the guards pull. Everybody pulls right. Nogo wasn't buying it, though. If you're going to fake out this defensive line for the Minnesota Vikings, you better do it quick because they are fast. Seven and a half sacks for Al Noga on the year. Second down and 13. Young gets hit, and Brent Jones on the reception is ridden out of bounds at the 42 by Carlos Jenkins. A gain of seven yards, but it was Henry Thomas this time who got in to smash Steve Young after he threw the ball. That's the thing about playing a good defensive line. It always seems to be somebody different that's getting to your quarterback. And here Thomas lines up in that cockeyed position and gets by Foster. And Young gets this hit right down into his legs. Watch his lower body. He has to basically fall away and step away and throw back. And what that'll do is that'll eventually make the ball tend to rise and leave the ball in the air for too long. Third down and six. Mike Sherrard in at wide receiver. Rice goes in motion and the pass to Young is intercepted to Taylor. This is going to be one man to beat. It'll be a Viking touchdown. Audrey McMillan. That is the Vikings' eighth defensive touchdown of the season. And McMillan with his second TD interception of the year. A 50-yard return by Aubrey McMillan, who has picked off eight enemy passes this season. And what an example of a quarterback getting some pressure, trying to get rid of a ball on a timing pattern, maybe a little bit early. The timing wasn't there. McMillan read the quarterback perfectly. Wad Reves with the extra point. It's 7-3 Minnesota. Coming into this game, Steve Young had the lowest interception rate in the NFL. But Audrey McMillan gives the Vikes a lead. Could pick off a Rich Gannon pass earlier, looking like an offensive player, breaking on the ball and coming back to the quarterback. There you see McMillan do the exact same thing. Young... Trying to make a tackle at the end here out of frustration more than anything else because he knows there was no way he should have thrown that ball inside with that kind of coverage. So turnovers have affected both scores in this game and Young's interception is seventh of the year and the Vikings are in front seven to three with 257 remaining. Reves will be kicking off and back deep Mark Logan and Alan Grant. Grant is on the right, Logan on the left for San Francisco. for San Francisco. And Alan Grant down the sidelines with a big return. He fumbles it out of bounds, but it'll be Niners ball just short of midfield. A 47-yard return by Grant will give the Niners excellent field position. Grant puts the Niners back in striking distance. Party's getting off to a good start. Hold on, I got a surprise. Ooh, champagne. Mm, your clothes, tasty. Your clothes, beautiful. Oh, this is great. Was this new? Yeah, it's Blanc de Noir. It's what? No. It's to try to build field position and momentum deflating. And here's a momentum deflator. When you set up a wall like that on a kickoff return, the other team has built some momentum up. What do you do? You bring the ball all, almost all the way back to the 50. So the onus is on the Viking defense here on first down, and Amp Lee gets to midfield. John Randall collared him there. The Minnesota Vikings know that a victory today over the 49ers will wrap up the NFC Central. No one picked the Vikings to win, and Dennis Green's team 9-4. and four, And they haven't played that well lately, and you could say what you want about when they clinch it with three games to go, but to be a solid playoff team, the Vikings know they have to beat a team like the 49ers in the regular season. Second down and nine in midfield. Rathman, the fullback, goes in motion. A lot of receivers for Young, and he finds Brent Jones. Like a pinball machine, he bounces off some defenders and dives inside the 35-yard line. A pickup of 16 yards. How valuable is Brent Jones? It was Glenn and Merriweather on the stop. 
Well, it's good to see a tight end like this in an offense. I'm getting sick and tired of these glorified offensive tackles playing tight ends in the NFL these days. Here's a guy that can block, and he can get downfield. He can take a hit, and he knows what the right direction to take the ball in. It isn't down on the ground. It's take the hits they want to give you, but get as many yards as you can. First down on the Viking 33. 7-3, to three, Minnesota. Young looking upfield. He's going deep for Jerry Rice. Audrey McMillan was covering him, and then it was Vincey Glenn. They finally put two men on Jerry Rice as Young was going for the downs on that one. Well, Young gave him the pump and the double move and everything else, and, and to McMillan's credit, he did not even bite on it. It was a nice job by him staying with Jerry Rice, ignoring the fakes, ignoring the opportunities to let Jerry Rice go. Steve Young's getting a little bit better protection right here. There's the pump. Here comes the ball. But look at the position of McMillan. Good job by McMillan. He's got the, the poise to know you don't let this guy run around by himself. You had best stay close to Jerry Rice. Two tight ends for the Niners. Second down and 10. Amp Lee, the running back, is split out to the left. And this pass is caught by John Taylor. And the 49ers keep the drive going. It is another first down, a pickup of 11 yards. They get to about the 23. Vincey Glenn making the tackle and the old problem. Who do you stop on this team? Well, we're, see we're seeing a, a 49er offense. It's kind of like it has been before Ricky Waters got here. It's you pass, you pass, and you set up your run. You spread out these great receivers, and you get the defense thinking pass, and that will hopefully open up your running game. And you make the point, I mean, who do you ISO on? Do you ISO on Rice? Then you deal with John Taylor there. Do you ISO on the wide receivers? Then you're leaving Brent Jones one-on-one -on -one in the middle. First down on the 22, and Rathman dives closely to the 20-yard line. Of course, this is what Dennis Green said he wanted to see. He says he wanted to see Young get rid of the ball quickly and throw and not run as much. Well, I, I tell you, the, the most important down for Denny Green in this defense for the Minnesota Vikings is first down. If they can hold the 49ers to four yards or less on first down, it's a big victory for them because that sets up their nickel, that sets up their pass rush. Well, that'll do it for the first quarter as they change ends. The 49ers are on a drive. But with 15 minutes gone in this big clash between two division leaders in the NFC, the Vikings are in front. And that is the end of the first quarter here at the Metrodome with the score, the Vikings 7 and the 49ers 3. Credit for the eight defensive touchdowns and 38 takeaways by the Vikings belongs to the man in the middle, Tony Junji, the defensive coordinator. And the time to really get down and clamp on these 49ers is when they get down in this red zone. This is when Tony Dungy can bring that blitz and take some chances against the 49ers. Second down and nine. Here comes the pressure and Young is sacked. And it's Carlos Jenkins who came in almost untouched. And a penalty marker is down as well. A loss of seven yards if it sticks. And the second sack of the game for the Vikings. Oh, that's right in that holding territory, Dick. That, that's in that area where the offensive linemen all cringe. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 93, defense. First down. But it is a foul against the Vikings, John Randall. And a first down for the 49ers when it looked as if the Vikings were knocking the 49ers nearly out of field goal range. And I, don't, I didn't see anything on that play that looked like it was unnecessary, possibly stuff to the face, maybe a head slap to an offensive lineman or something, but... That was a clean blitz by Carlos Jenkins. A nice call by Tony Dungy in the defense. They took their shot. They took their chance, and they got home with it. Well, this is going to be a blow to the Vikings as the Niners will have a first down inside the 15-yard line. The capacity crowd here at the Metrodome disapproves, as does head coach Denny Green. Well, the important thing for the Vikings is not to overreact here. Don't try to make something happen just because something bad has happened. First down on the 14, and Amp Lee finds an opening off the left side. You know, that's exactly what they did last week against the Eagles when Randall Cunningham was running wild. They kind of lost a little of their poise. Lee picks up five yards, and it's uh, Randall and Jenkins on the stop. You know, that's something in talking to Carlos Jenkins and Todd Scott. They both mentioned the fact that this is a defensive team that needs to really stay together. They need to all be on the same page. When something goes bad specifically, 
That's the time they're tested the most. And, and you talk about those two guys. Those are the emotional sparks, Jenkins and Scott. Those are the guys that are going to get the crowd going. Those are the guys that look to make the big plays. That's Scott who's had a big season. And you saw Jenkins, second down and five. The ball is at the nine-yard line. Jerry Rice in motion to the left. And up the middle, Tom Rathman gets the ball within a couple of yards of pay dirt, and he is stopped after a gain of six by Del Rio and Merriweather. And it is a first down for the 49ers, bringing up first and goal. And that's the part of the field the 49ers love to throw to Brent Jones, and they love to throw out of there to the running back, popping out of the backfield right there. There's no real way of stopping that play. The only way you stop that play is you limit the yardage after the catch. Tom Rathman had a career best. Now with two touchdowns last week against Miami, his eighth and ninth. And this is Jerry Rice territory. Comes in motion, you dump him one in the flat. And there goes Rice, and Rathman is hit immediately by Al Noga. It'll bring up second and goal from the two. Noga and Dolman, they trade sides in this goal line type defense. They like Dolman coming from the other side. But watch the penetration right away that Noga gets. Runs right through the offensive line, and he's into the backfield just after Rathman gets the ball. And that's the kind of play, and that's the kind of penetration that can cause a turnover in the goal line very easily. It'll be second and goal. Play fake. And the pass, and Amp Lee will have the touchdown. Amp Lee, who scored a touchdown rushing last week against the Dolphins, but has his first NFL TD as a receiver, and the 49ers have regained the lead. Well, with Rice going in motion in the opposite direction, the defense is so aware of where he is, they lose complete track of where the running back comes out of the backfield, and that was an easy one for Lee. The hardest part about that play was whether or not he was going to make the catch because Steve Young made a nice throw. Amply filling in for the injured Ricky Waters, who has a shoulder injury and could see action today. Mike Cooper, who has missed one conversion. That was last week against Miami. Comes back, and the extra point is good. So early here in the second quarter, the Niners were gained in the penalty against John Randall for unnecessary roughness. Darren Nelson and Keith Henderson to receive for the Vikings. And we'll have an offside penalty as Darren Nelson returns. And Nelson has still not been knocked out until this moment. A 21-yard return by Nelson. John Johnson gets credit for the tackle, but there was an offside penalty upfield against the kicking team. In this case, the 49ers. Johnny Greer, the referee today. Offside, right side of the line on the kicking team. We'll re-kick. Let's take one more look at the touchdown. Watch Jamie Williams and watch Vincey Glenn. They'll go out of the picture for a second. Next time you see Vincey Glenn, He'll be getting bumped in the end zone by Jamie Williams. This is what you might refer to as a pick play. The tight end is picking through the guy that's supposed to be covering the back, and that makes it an easy touchdown. And that's not the first time the 49ers have done that. Have uh, I, besides leg whipping, I think the 49ers are the most well-known for picking than anything else in the league. Question is, is Dennis Green bringing that uh, format to the Minnesota? Well, you know, the best thing about Denny Green, in my opinion, Dick, is Denny Green is doing Denny Green's thing. I think it does George Seifert, Denny Green, Mike Holmgren, Sam White, all these so-called, they, they call them Walsh protégés. It does them a big disservice. These guys are strong coaches that should stand on their own merit and should not constantly be associated with somebody they all happen to work with because they're all, they're all developing their own identity. Denny Green brought the Redskin offense in here. He's got a defense that looks nothing like the 49er defense. This is Denny Green's team. Jack Burns came from the Redskins. His offensive coordinator, Tony Dungy. Topher kicking off for the second time, and this is a short kick, and Darren Nelson running up to return. Darren Nelson. The 
veteran can still do it, can he? Brings it out to the 40-yard line. Remember, he's playing his last season for the Minnesota Vikings. He was recruited by Dennis Green at Stanford and returned by 22 yards. Thane Gash made the tackle. Well, coming up next, the second half of our CBS doubleheader and a big one. The Dallas Cowboys against the Washington Redskins. Opening game of the year. Redskins had no shot. I think they'll have a better shot today. Well, they were intimidated by that Dallas crowd. They'll have the crowd on their, on their side this time. But that game would be decided on the ground. That is a defense in Washington that can stop Emmett Smith, I think, especially in RFK. Roger Craig is the setback. First down on the 40. A play fake. And wide open was Joe Johnson. Gannon missed him. And he is being chased out of bounds by Tim Harris. A one-yard pickup, but I saw Joe Johnson wide open, 20 yards downfield. Well, maybe you should have had the ball then, Dick. If you saw him, he was that open, give, him, give you the ball. But Gann Gannon had a play fake. They're not a play fake, but a little pump fake action. And that's, I think, what opened up Joe Johnson so quick right there. And he just didn't see him and was not getting much pressure. Second down and nine. Vikings on the 41-yard line. Four wide receivers, including Jake Reed, number 86, to the bottom of your picture. And it's Roger Craig. Bounces off one defender, and Craig gets into open field. Tell you, he played a, with a separated shoulder last year while with the Raiders. He's been hurt, twist an ankle, and he still picks up 21 yards on a terrific run. I never get tired of watching Roger Craig run. Does he have any quit in him? I don't know. You tell me. He's banged up. He's hurt. He slams the line of scrimmage. And those trademark high knees never stop pumping. This is the last guy the 49er defense wants to get on a roll because he can absolutely kill you with the momentum he gives an offense. Minnesota has doubled the rushing total of 49ers. It is a first down. Rolling out is Gannon. And he fires the pass intended for Hassan Jones. And he was covered by Merton Hanks. Dennis Green telling us that Roger Craig should carry between five and ten times more than he normally has. And I think he could be a big back down the stretch and in the playoff. I mean, Roger Craig had arthroscopic surgery on his knee two weeks ago. Had it on a Monday, or had actually had it on a Sunday. Went up to Denny Green the following Thursday and said, I think I can play. Saturday was in, you know, running around, said, I can play tomorrow. Said, no, you're not going to play. Monday, he was full speed one week after surgery. The guy physically works harder than anybody else. He's amazing. Three Super Bowl rings. Terry Allen on the draw play. Little extra effort for Allen, who has remained durable throughout this year. Picks up five yards on that play with Mike Walter, one of the inside backers, making the stop. You know, what really makes Terry Allen's statistics even, even more amazing is the fact that He's not a situation player. I guess Roger Craig's a situation player from the halfback position, but he's not an every down, all down, all the game kind of a running back, and he's still getting the yards he is. I mean, with this offensive line and the right breaks in the last three games, he should have 1,000 yards this season. Vikings have converted two of three on third down. They need five yards. Penalty marker is thrown, and Gannon's pass extends Hassan Jones a little bit too much. He was defended by Merton Hanks, but there's a flag down at about the 35. And Gannon was forced to hold on to that ball for a little bit longer than he wanted to. Had to let that ball float out of there just as the rush got to him. 10-7 to 7 the score in favor of the 49ers. Well, you either take the penalty and push him back five yards or you make him kick a field goal. Illegal motion, offense, two men moving. It's declined. Fourth down. Wad Reves' longest field goal was from 52 yards. He is perfect beyond 50, and he's going to go try it again. He has been an outstanding long kicker, helped, of course, by kicking indoors here at the Metrodome. Kicking is still kicking, Dick. I mean, they talk about Candlestick Park being a bad place, and Lambeau Field's a bad place, and the Met, I mean, the, the Vets a bad place to kick, but here's a guy that's got plenty of leg, and watch how well he drives down through the ball. 51-yard attempt with Newsom, the punter, holding on the kick. And the kick is underneath the crossbar. So Revez misses the field goal 
And as a result, the 49ers maintain their three-point lead with just inside 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter. And Henry Thomas jumped. Was he drawn off? And apparently he was. Encroachment. No, he was not. Nose guard. Defense. Still first down. We got to introduce these two guys. That's Henry Thomas. We'll ID him for you. <laughs> Nose. That sounds kind of impersonal. That's kind of like college when they used to just say offside or holding offense. I always liked that, though, because they could never they could never put a finger on you. Especially when they play four defensive linemen up front. First down and five as a result of that penalty. On the defense. Young to Jerry Rice after the catch. Let's see what he does. And he gets to the Viking 40-yard line on a perfectly executed precision slam pass, a 21-yard gain, Vincey Glenn and Carl Lee. People talk about the great Jerry Rice and all the touchdown passes, but he does this better than any receiver that I've ever seen, and that's go inside. He doesn't care if there's linebackers. He doesn't care that crossing patterns is where you get get knocked in the chops the most. This guy is absolutely fearless. Hits do not intimidate Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice is one yard away from tying Lance Allworth with the NFL record for seven straight seasons of a thousand yards or more. I think he should get that record. First down. And the pass is caught by Rice. And Rice picks up five there. Del Rio on the tackle. So Jerry Rice Seven straight years has gained a thousand or more yards. We talked about how tough he is. He gets slammed around a little bit and gets up smiling. Watch Carlos Jenkins right there. Smacks him, arm over. If you're going to smack Jerry Rice, you better smack him a little bit harder than that. And if you're going to do that, you better stay with him because he'll find a way to get open, especially when his quarterback's getting pressured as Steve Young was right there. He's in pretty good company, Mr. Rice. Second down and six the Viking 36-yard line. And here is Amp Lee. This time he had to pick his way, and he got seven yards on that play with Glenn and Noga making the tackle. Well, we talked about the moves that an Amp Lee can make on this carpet here in, at the Metrodome. Watch Merriweather, 57, coming forward to make the tackle. I got him, I got him. Uh-oh. <laughs> you can't, you know, you got to attack a guy like that almost like in a phone booth. If you get outside of a phone booth with a guy that can get that much momentum going and make those cuts can make you look pretty silly. Right now, the 49ers with two pretty good drives in their last two possessions, and the Vikings not putting great pressure on Young. First down on the 29. Young calling the audible here. And here's Jerry Rice. Gets away from one defender. McMillan had him and lost him. But then the Vikings came in. A gain of nine yards. And very close to another first down. And you saw Pat O'Brien was talking about Jerry Rice going against this defensive backfield in the NFL today. Watch the respect McMillan's given Jerry Rice. He's staying three to four yards away from him. And if Steve Young sees that on a consistent basis, look for more of those audibles, those comeback, those quick little curls like that to Jerry Rice. They've got to get up. They've got to roll towards him so the cornerback has the confidence that if he messes up, the safety's behind him to help. McMillan made the tackle. Scott was the guy who missed him. Second down and one, and here's Amp Lee going outside. And Amp Lee, with a good juke, gets the first down to about the 15-yard line. Mike Merriweather and Carl Lee brings down Lee, who's starting his second game. And Amp Lee showing these race car brakes again. Full speed, running behind his block by Foster, stops. That's a defensive back that time in Todd Scott. He made missed and cut in for that first down. So, you know, the, the 49ers, we mentioned, you pass, you pass, you set up the run. This is the kind of offense they like to run. They'll hit you early with the pass, and then they get you worried about the running attack. Then they hit Jerry Rice the 16-yard line, and here is Amp Lee. They're going to the hot hand, and Lee gets to about the 11-yard line. A gain of five yards, so 36 yards gained by Amp Lee with Del Rio and Jenkins making the tackle. Steve Young, who came in as the top-rated passer in the NFL, 
has been successful on 11 of 14 passes. He's over 100 yards, has thrown a touchdown pass and also an interception, and that resulted in the only Minnesota score. And if he keeps up the way he has, I think, here in this season and can finish off the last two regular season games after this as strongly as he has played the rest of the season, I, I don't think there's any doubt he is the NFL MVP and the MVP with the least respect around the league because he followed Joe Montana. Emmett Smith would be the only other candidate, and there is a flag again as Chris Dolman was anxious to get into Young's territory. I love this part. Everybody points at each Offside, other. Offside, 56 defense. Boy, the Vikings still second down. Really over anxious trying to get to Young. And nothing makes a defensive lineman more nervous or tired than pass rushing. And Dolman sees something whether it was Young's foot or Young's hands, or he's got a read on every play is when he thinks the ball's gonna be snapped, and he saw that read, and it wasn't snapped. As a result, the Niners move closer. It'll be second down and less than a yard. Outside the five-yard line with 5.15 remaining in the first half. 49ers lead 10 to seven, and looking to extend that margin. carry was was that a blown play or not he may have the first down anyway with Noga and Scott defending I, I don't want to say it was a sense of panic but it was more of a sense of urgency when Steve Young reversed out looked saw he had nobody to hand the ball to and then ran for the first down I don't think that was designed as a quarterback there's no such thing as a quarterback tackle dive Whoop! where is he I don't have a back Whoop! I'll get one to myself anyway you know, and that's another example of Steve Young kind of running like a running back. He wasn't sliding. He was going head first, and he was going for the first down. And when he runs, he's looking to score a touchdown. First and goal at the five. Two tight ends for the Niners. Rice moves left. And Amp Lee. Vikings had a shot at Amp Lee at about the line of scrimmage, but he sliced into about the two-yard line. And Al Noga did another nice job of penetrating over there on the left side of the Niners offense, getting into the backfield. But once again, Amp Lee was able to sort of power break his way through the trouble and score it up there for a game. How about the depth of these 49ers? I mean, with Taylor out for a while, Mike Sherrard did the job. Odessa Turner is the fourth wide receiver. Here, Ricky Waters, who is within earshot of 1,000 yards, is replaced by Lee, who's having a fine game. And one thing that running game does do to this kind of an offense, it opens up the play. Second and goal on the two-yard line. And here is Lee, and he will easily score his second touchdown of the game. That was too easy. And Ralph Tam locking up front. As he heads this way, watch how easy this all is. Watch the entire defense collapse in. Here they come. Good job by Rathman. Nice job by Foster pulling from his right guard position. And that's easier than you draw it up. That's what you call best case scenario offense because all those little circles you draw up on paper got the other circles just perfectly. So now Mike Cooper is aboard. And it is now 17 to 7 as Amp Lee has scored his second touchdown. So the Vikings missed a chance to tie on a field goal, and the Niners came with their injury, needing 15 yards for 1,000 on the season, and Amp Lee, who has scored two touchdowns already for the 49ers today. And they've been two touchdowns, one on the pass on that pick play by Jamie Williams that looked easy, and the second touchdown on that run was just because of some great lead blocking by Tom Rathman and Roy Foster. Kofer will be kicking off. Henderson and Nelson are back deep. Ten-point lead for the 49ers. And it'll be Darren Nelson returning from the one-yard line. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And Nelson brings it out to the 21-yard line. So the Minnesota Vikings looking to get back with 319 to go in the hand. And company is they've got to put something methodical together. 
and a lot of that goes to the offensive line. You see the offensive line for the 49ers. The Viking offensive line has got to establish the running game and has to establish Rich Gannon's confidence in knowing that he won't be hit and he can complete the passes. Steve Jordan, the tight end, is split wide left on first down. Gannon gets ground and dumps it off to Allen, who falls. And now they say the pass was not caught by Allen. An incomplete pass, and that'll go to the Vikings' advantage that it was incomplete. Well, that's the Vikings' play. That's one thing they run well. You saw earlier in the year they tore Chicago up with these little screen passes to Terry Allen and Roger Craig, but a good job by the 49er defense. You see Mike Walter and Bill Romanowski were right there. And Allen didn't get a chance to catch that one, but they can't forget about that play. Minnesota has got to use that play. If they can't run, the screen is as good as a good running play. Vikings have had the ball, or the Niners have had the ball for 18 of the 26 and a half minutes. Second down and 10, Gannon's toss. Joe Johnson, and it's a good catch by Johnson at the 25. David Whitmore was closest to him. So the Vikings offense has really not done anything. They've not had the ball and the only points that they have amassed came on McMillan's interception return. And let's check this out. How good a catch was this? Stretching. There's a clinic for you. Do you see that right foot? I mean, if you're out there and you want to be a wide receiver, you're a young guy. What presence of mind? You're one foot down, you catch that ball, and you drag the other one. Just a fine example. Third down and six. Gannon on third down, and he hits Carter, but he is, bounces off, and Allen, that is, Terry Allen, but he is short of the first down, I believe. Let's see if the second effort got him close. Well, somebody, there's a penalty marker. Then. Somebody's second effort got a, got a nice little flag flying through. The, it, was a, it was an all-pro kind of a flag, too. That thing went about 40 feet in the air. Right now, where they're spotting the ball, the Vikings would be a bit shy of the first down. But if the penalty is against the 49ers. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 21. Offense. After the play. The downtown. Fourth down. Terry Allen after the play. So not only are they one yard shy, they've got a lot more to go following that penalty and a lot of the penalties have gone against Dennis Green's team thus far. Well that's a situation I think where Dennis Green has got to get his offense on the sideline and get him settled down. He's got a group that's getting extremely frustrated. You get these personal fouls start happening a lot of the time it's got to do with frustration. Things aren't going well. You see that nice hit. He bounces off that. Keeps going. Now what's he do? No wait a minute. Wow, Newsom gets off the kick to Alan Grant. Great kick by Newsom. And Grant still on his feet. Remember, he had a 47-yard kickoff return in the first quarter. And uh, the 49ers will have really good field position following the 12-yard return of Newsom's good kick. And that penalty was a big play. I didn't see anything happen there. And when you're playing an offense as good as San Francisco's, you can't afford to keep giving them this kind of field position. You want to make San Francisco go 80 yards. If they can go 80 yards on your defense, they deserve it. But when you start giving them half a field to run an offense on, you get to be in some serious trouble. I think Terry Allen, unless there was something there that we just didn't see, or he called the, the official some sort of a uh, lineage type of a uh, comment he might have made, uh, I don't see anything on that penalty. It sure didn't happen immediately after the play. First down on the 47, and the pass to Jerry Rice, defended by Audrey McMillan. Let's see if we can take a close look, but we did not see Allen do anything after that play. Now watch at the end here. Thane Gash has got him. He's holding his legs up. Okay, that's not illegal. That's not illegal. What exactly is illegal about that? That was a terrible, terrible call. Two-minute warning here at the Metrodome. It's been all 99ers. Great example here. They've got to focus. Second down and one, Amp Lee. And a tackle, two-top tackle by Del Rio. Let's see if Lee got enough for the first down. 150 showing. Each team has all three of their timeouts remaining, and they're going to have a measurement to see whether Lee got the first down. So a 
That penalty, of course, we saw several shots of it as you did. We don't understand why they called a penalty on Terry Allen. But the Vikings, the last time that the 49ers had the ball, were called for two tough defensive penalties as well, which led the Niners downfield. And regardless as to re really whether or not we thought that was a penalty, they went ahead and called it. And this is the kind of adversity a team like Minnesota has got to learn to deal with. And it's the kind of situation we're seeing right now that traditionally the Minnesota team has had a hard time with. Things have gone bad. Things have gotten down on you. You got to focus. You got to stay in the game. You see the first down, just a little short of that first down. But you got to stay focusing in the game. Earlier in the year, they got down 20 to nothing to the Chicago Bears. Got an interception return by Scott for a touchdown. Came back and beat the Bears and showed early in the year they could handle a lot of adversity. Great opportunity now to, to focus and to pointing towards the playoffs for Danny Green and these Vikings. Can they handle even worse adversity? They came back against the Browns as well, but I think that was the last time they did that. So third down and one, or actually just inches for the 49ers. 148 remaining in the first half. And a quarterback sneak. Steve Young. He has the first down, and now the Niners are signaling for a timeout. And they are granted their witch, so they have two remaining. As they are in Minnesota territory and a 10-point lead. Steve Young, back to the line, has completed his last seven passes. Well, you're seeing San Francisco right now, offensively and defensively, at their methodically brutal best. This is a team that can just go away with the ball. They can run it at you. They can throw it at you. They can staffle you on defense. Minnesota needs a big, big play from the defense here with two timeouts in a minute and a half. That's plenty for Steve Young. From the 42-yard line, and the pass is to John Taylor, who gets... Camp Lee who gets inside the 40-yard line and a pickup of four yards. Clock continues to run, winding down to a minute and 20. It'll be second down and six. To swing it out to Amp Lee again. And he is knocked out of bounds with 112. No gain on the play. Michael Cooper has already kicked his longest field goal of the year, 46 yards to give the Niners a 3-0 lead. That's Audrey McMillan who returned the pass interception 50 yards, and that's been the only score for the Vikings today. Well, the, the 49ers are well outside of Kofor's field goal range. This is in the 55-yard variety here. And two interesting calls for a team that practices the two-minute offense so much. Little swings out to a part-time player in Lee. This is a money down, money situations at the end of the half, and that's when you go to Jerry Rice. Third down and six from the 38. There's Rice in motion toward the line, and the rollout by Young. He was looking to run, and he is tackled from behind at the 35-yard line. Short of first down yardage by John Randall. And it's fourth down, and Cooper will come onto the field with 56 seconds, and the clock is still running. What a nice job by the Vikings defense, not buying pass here, not paying any attention to Rice. He's only a blocker. Two guards out pulling Foster and McIntyre, and the entire defense rallies to the ball just beautifully. And the Minnesota Vikings have called a timeout to stop the clock with 46 seconds to go because they'll have the ball again for less than a minute to try to get something going after Kofor's field goal attempt. And this is very much a bet, you know, they need everything perfect from the 49ers standpoint for Mike Kofor to make this. He's got the leg. It's been the accuracy has been his problem. And they need the perfect snap, the perfect hold, and for Kofor just to nail this one. From the Vikings standpoint, how many times have you seen a Minnesota Vikings team block a field goal? block a kick in a big situation like this. They've got a long, rich tradition of special teams excellence. Right. Young looking to throw, and he's going to run. And I think the Vikings have held him. John Randall made the tackle. And from where they have placed the ball, the Vikings may be taking over, and they will on down. The very big defensive stop for the Minnesota Vikings in the waning seconds of this first half. Nice job of coverage by this Minnesota Vikings defense. Watch Steve Young, and look at him looking. One receiver, two receiver, three receiver, four receiver. I got nowhere to go. I'm going to have to run. 
And you talked about that defensive line, keeping Young right in their sights and not overcommitting and opening up running gaps. Nice job by the defensive line. Vikings have two timeouts remaining. They're on their 34-yard line. Time running out in the half, and the pass intended for Terry Allen. The crowd thought that Gannon should have gotten that ball on the money to a wide-open Allen. You know, Denny Green and, and Jack Burns, the offensive coordinator, have made the point that if things aren't going right, we will not hesitate on making a change at the quarterback position. And don't be surprised if Danny Green puts Sean Salisbury in for this second half because Gannon has been completely ineffective and has thrown some pretty ugly passes here so far. He relieved Gannon in the Cleveland game and brought the team back to Salisbury. Second down and 10. Gannon with a penalty marker down. Running for it. We may have a holding call, however. Gannon is into 49er territory and ridden out of bounds by Thane Gash inside the 40. But there's a flag, and let's see if it is holding against Minnesota after Gannon ran for 27 yards, and it is holding against the Vikings, and they'll bring it back. Niners, that may be a good idea for him to start doing. Well, like Satchel Page said, if you look over there, something might be gaining on you. Well, something's down south. Second and 20, and here comes the pass rush. By Brown, Gannon running for his life. He's tackled way back at the 26 by Romanowski. And a gain of two. Clock will stop with nine seconds remaining in the first half. But the Vikings nowhere near close to threatening to put any more points on the board. Here. Well, we're seeing the 49ers put some good pressure up front with their pass rush on Gannon and doing an even better job right now down the field as the Viking defense is covering well down the field. In most cases, the 49er defense is taking all of Gannon's receivers away. And you see George Seifert and Jeff Fisher, their defensive back coach. I mean, those are the guys, their emphasis right now on this team is on defense because they know that this is the side of the ball. If they can keep improving on, will make them a team that will be incredibly tough to beat. Receivers have caught only three passes for 13 yards, and Anthony Carter has been shut out. Nine seconds to go, and on the draw play, Terry Allen is going to be wrestled down, and that should do it. The clock runs down as Whitmore and Gash make the tackle. The crowd capacity not at all pleased with the Vikings' offensive performance in this first half. And that is the end of the first half with the score, the 49ers 17 and the Vikings 7. Young has had a marvelous day. In fact, he has completed his last nine passes, and the Niners have a big edge in ball control, and that could spell good things for their running game in the second half. And look just for the 49ers to do that. They ran quite effectively in the second quarter after pass at this stage of the race. And a long kick into the end zone, and it's Logan. And the 49ers will be content to start from the 20. 49ers, first four possessions resulted. Three it resulted in scores. They lost the ball on downs and the interception, which was returned for a touchdown. You, you get the perception right now of this Vikings team as a as a group, offense, defense, special teams, everything is having a little problem right now with their wind passage. I don't think they're getting quite enough air down into their lungs and up to their brain. They're tight. They're constricted. They look to be just a little bit aware of the fact that if they don't win this one, they're staring at going into Pittsburgh. And if they lose that one, then they got to go man on man with Green Bay. They are very tight right now. John Taylor gets by one defender. Carl Lee and goes out of bounds and picks up nine yards. Vikings are also going to have to do a better job of tackling defensively. Well, they're going to get opportunities down the field to make some tackles. And you talk a lot about yards after the catch. And you don't do any other team or watch another team in the league that does that better than the 49ers. So tackling defensively would be a key because the Niners will not only try to run the ball wide and get into the backfield, they will get those high percentage passes like that last one to Taylor and make the Vikings make tackles. Second down and one. And Amp Lee runs into his own man, turns the corner and gets the first down. And exhibition of running by the second round draft pick from Florida State. Ampley picks up six yards. Finally, Bensie Glenn made the tackle. You, know, you talk about Jerry Rice an awful lot, you know, the great patterns he runs and how many touchdowns he scores, but watch what he does away from the ball. Right 
here. Blocking on Todd Scott, that gives Amp Lee the corner because Jack Del Rio just cannot get out there and pursue fast enough. He needs support from his defensive backfield, and Jerry Rice wiped that out. You forget about the fact that along with Sterling Sharp, this is the best blocking wide receiver in football, I think. And I think you're right. First down on the 36, play fake. Young steps up, and he is hit from behind and holds on to the ball. Al Noga with his second sack of the game, and credit to Steve Young for holding on to the football when Yoga really, Noga gave him a hit from behind. Well, you talk about the old long way home. Watch Noga here with the yellow sleeves. Number 99 goes all the way around. And I mean all the way around everybody and comes back. That's an example of just tenacity. Defensive players need tenacity. They can never quit. And Al Noga never quits until he has number eight. Eight and a half sacks on the year for Noga. Second down and 11. Young going down again. And let's see again. It's Al Noga. I believe that'll be three in the game. Two on successive plays. And this time a loss of seven. And Noga is slow getting up. I think Noga caught a knee right in the right in the midsection as Steve Young was going down. But we talked about it at the beginning. Ralph Tam and Noga. Here's an example. Noga's the quick, the speed guy. Gives, gives Tam a great spin. That right shoulder into the middle of Tam's body. And the next thing Tam feels is that offside arm hitting him in the back. And he is by him for that sack. Noga is still on the turf with his three sacks. Has nine and a half on the year and is second to Chris Dolman. And he is replaced up front by Robert Harris, rookie from Southern University. And if you're on a roll rushing the passer, as Noga was those last two times, this is the down you don't want to be out. <laughs> I mean, look, you got, you, got, you got third and forever, so you know Young's going to be throwing this thing, and you pin those ears back, and you hope your right tackle, you can get him on another spin, because Steve Young is going to be moving wherever he's going. Might have had the hat trick if he had stayed in. Third down and 18. Young's pass up the middle, and it's caught by Jerry Rice. But Mike Sherrard makes the catch. Sorry, Mike Sherrard makes the reception. He looked like Rice making that catch into Viking territory, a 24-yard game. And this is the difference between an offense that is, that is executing in the Niners and one that isn't in the Vikings. In these crucial situations, receivers have to all assume they're the ones getting the ball, and Sherrard ran right through that pattern. As you see, Young still got the hit, but it was about a half a beat late. Gerard, who played so well in John Taylor's absence, the Vikings were playing with five defensive backs, and they still couldn't stop the Niners. First down on the 48-yard line, and Amp Lee dives forward to the 45-yard line. That's a big backbreaker for the Vikings to see Young on that third down pass. He has completed his last 11 passes, and that silenced the crowd that thought the Vikings might assume momentum here in the third quarter, but with 11.45 remaining, 17-7, and the Niners are in Minnesota territory. Well, what that did, too, Dick, is a defense likes to establish momentum, establish dominance, and after those back-to-back -back big defensive plays by Noga, Minnesota was about to do that, and a lot of that just dies immediately with a big, long play. Second down and seven. Young's pass to Rathman, and he's got another first down. Audrey McMillan on the tackle and a 10-yard pickup for Tom Rathman. About as versatile a fullback as you'll find in the NFL. Bad things happen to quarterbacks after they throw a football. You saw Randall Cunningham last year get a knee. Tam is holding the heck out of Harris, and Harris comes in on the side of Steve Young's leg, and if Steve Young doesn't react and immediately flip up, he's another knee surgery candidate. Al Noga has returned to the defensive line for the Vikings. And it'll be first down on the 35. Here is Lee trying to change direction. Stalled by the Vikings up front, and Carl Lee came in from the secondary in a loss of two yards. Merriweather was the first to reach him. And that's an example there of a young running back trying to make something happen. You know, Ampley's at his best when he's running full speed and making his cuts. There, there was nothing there, so he stopped and started making moves. And, you know, he's making moves on air. You don't make moves on air, because air doesn't bite. Defenders then get you. 
Second down and 12 on the 37-yard line. Five minutes have gone by in the third quarter. It is still 17-7, 49ers. Trying to protect their home field advantage in the NFC. Young getting a big rush. And the pass intended for Sherrard was overthrown. And once again coming in was John Randall and Henry Thomas. And Young taking a beating. And we saw some blood on his knee. Oh, he's got blood on his knees. He's got blood on both knees and his elbows and everything else. Because this turf will chew you up when you start getting slapped down to the ground like this on a consistent basis from your pass rush. Now, this is just an example of Steve Young didn't have anything, and he's throwing this one away because he knows he's going to get one in the chops. And he gets his ankle rolled up on there right there by Randall. Young had completed 12 in a row before that incompletion. There's Henry Thomas, who was also part of the action. Third down and 12. Odessa Turner in the game, in motion. Penalty flag down. Jerry Rice up the middle has it, and he'll outrace the defense for a touchdown. But there's a flag down, and we'll see. I think it's going to be offsides on the Vikings, Dick. He had some jump by Al Noga. And no, I think the penalty... Judging by Young's reaction is indeed against the 49ers. Good break for the Minnesota Vikings. The Niners jump on offense on a big play as the Minnesota Vikings were bringing that blitz. Illegal motion, 64, offense. Well, that's Still Ralph Tam. Down. Ralph Tam guarding it right tackle for Harris Barton today. It doesn't take much. It's usually just a quiver. Watch the high side, 64. Little pre-snap move. As he saw Noga jump, he quivered his upper body a little bit, and that's what it took. Tam, who's a journeyman, played with three teams last year, was a starter at guard two years ago with the Browns, and a plan B pickup this year from Cincinnati. Third down and 17, Anthony Parker is in as a fifth defensive back for the Vikings. Gets away from one rusher. He can run, but he can't hide. And the Vikings close down on Steve Young, knocking the Niners out of a possible field goal attempt. No gain on the play. It was Henry Thomas and Chris Dolman that time. And with a little help from Ralph Tam and an illegal procedure penalty, Minnesota dodges a big bullet because Steve Young had done a good job of reading the blitz two plays earlier, but give a lot of credit to Chris Dolman and Al Noga and Henry Thomas and John Randall. They're the ones that made the biggest difference on this drive, because when they weren't sacking Steve Young, they had the offensive line so worried about the pressure that you had guys moving. Klaus Wilmsmeyer will kick for the first time today. Joe Johnson and Anthony Parker are back deep for the Vikings. It, and it goes out of bounds. Wilsmeyer shanked his first punting attempt of the day, and it goes out of bounds. But getting back to the penalty story, certainly the Vikings had some bad breaks from their standpoint in the first half. That kick went only 13 yards. Will Regain, who was supposed to be an important receiver. Some pressure. I think if he doesn't produce on this series or next, the le next one at the latest, you got to yank him and give your team a chance to win. First and 10 on the 29. Darren Nelson goes off the right side. And Nelson with a great bit of running after one defender had hit him. David Whitmore makes the tackle and a gain of four, nine yards for the veteran. And here's a little Minnesota Vikings mush over the right side behind Habib and Irwin and Jordan. Pulling back side with Zimmerman and McDaniel. Now, now this is just attitude by Nelson. Good blocking to start with, but Darren Nelson just decided he wasn't going down. And the give up the middle. Darren Nelson has enough for the first down beyond the 40-yard line. This is his last year, and... He said that the best game the Vikings played was that 1987 contest against the 49ers in the playoffs. I find it kind of interesting that he starts the second half. I guess Denny Green figured they needed a little spark. If Terry Allen and Roger Craig hadn't performed poorly, the last time I checked, they hadn't thrown any passes in that first half. Oh. Craig is in there now. First down on the 41. And here's Roger Craig trying to go outside. Is written out of bounds 
finally by Dana Hall, but there was a flag and a gain of 12 pending the penalty. That's in a holding area, yep. Holding against the Vikings, but they're trying to come out here early in the second half and establish some physical dominance offensively. If you're not running the ball effectively, you're sometimes better off just trying to pound the ball physically on offense and get the defense on their heels. Holding, 64, offense, still first down. And that's Randall McDaniel. But interesting, Randy, how Dennis Green is not pressing any panic buttons. He's down by 10. That's not a lot of points. And instead of just coming out and forcing Gannon to throw where he hasn't been sharp, he wants to establish something with the running game. Well, they need to establish something offensively, period. And you might as well start with the run. You saw the 49ers in the first half establish their offense with their passing game, then go to the running game. Minnesota's trying to establish the run and hope that opens up their pass. They may be forced to throw first down and 20, and the pass to Anthony Carter, split in the middle. Caught from behind by David Whitmore, but they finally found AC to the tune of 54 yards. the spark the Minnesota Vikings and especially their quarterback Rich Gannon needed because a confidence job of Gannon of standing in there and whistling this thing into the middle of a zone watch that ball nice pass right behind Walter right to Anthony Carter little help there so Whitmore could catch him he got a little push from the back from Dana Hall a little extra added speed first down on the 15 yard line and Roger Craig is hit immediately and might have lost the yard. Tim Harris penetrating. No gain on the play. We got a little woofing going on, a little between the defensive lines and the offensive lines. And there's nobody in the NFL that talks more about absolutely nothing than Tim Harris. Tim Harris, I think, flaps his mouth just to hear himself talk. I mean, when you used to play against him, you totally ignored him because you knew all he was going to do. There was nothing personal. He just wanted to hear his voice. He established that with Green Bay and has brought it along to San Francisco. Second and ten in a rollout, and Gannon is dragged down by Tim Harris. And there he puts the six shooters away. That's his style, whether you like it or not, and most people say not. And the first sack of the game by the 49ers, and a and, loss of 12. And Dick, to his credit, when he is moving his mouth and talking, it's usually because he thinks he's got a chance to do something like this. Watch this. They do not block him. I'm going to take a wild stab at this and, and say that maybe they wanted to assign somebody to a guy like Tim Harris, who now has 13 sacks on the year. you, you got to pay a little bit of attention and respect to him. Sounds like a good idea. Third down and 22. On the 27-yard line, Vikings have been to the 15 of the Niners. Gannon drills it, and it's overthrown. Joe Johnson was the intended receiver. And the crowd not pleased with Gannon's execution on that pass. And fourth down coming up. Now that pass is not so much Gannon as it is the coverage. Look what he has to throw over. He's throwing over the defense. He's throwing over the linebackers. And there's no way he zips that in there. If he does, Bill Romanowski in the middle of your screen, 53, knocks it away. He had to put it out of his arm reach. And unfortunately, with that much zip, it just continued to rise. Juan Reves missed a 51-yarder back in the second quarter. Could have tied the game at the time. This one is from 44 yards out, and this kick is good. So the Vikings' only offensive production in this game is this field goal from Reves from 44 yards, and it is now 17 to 10. Going well. Reves kicking off to Logan at the goal line. With a return to the 20 and to the 25 yard line, where he is stopped by Novoselsky. Logan with an 82 yard kickoff return last week against the Miami Dolphins, the team he formerly played for. Timeout. 17 to 21, and had 12 straight completions at one point. Roy Barker has replaced Henry Thomas at left defensive tackle for the Vikes. First down on the 26 yard line. Looking to throw, and the pass is caught by Taylor. It'll be a first down just beyond the sticks. And defending was Bensie Glenn, who's playing in place of Felix Wright today at free safety. 
And what Vincey Glenn did there is he gave John Taylor some of that Jerry Rice respect, played well off him. And all Steve Young is really doing is coming up to the line of scrimmage, it seems, looking at the defense, looking at the coverage, anticipating what side is going to give him that kind of cushion, and just firing that side out to the ball. Ball is at the Niners, 37, two tight ends with Brent Jones and Jamie Williams. And the handoff is to Amp Lee, coming inside. Amp Lee gets away from three or four defenders and is now racing. He's got Bensie Glenn, the one man to beat, and goes out of bounds. Lee did a lot of that, and the Vikings hurt themselves with some weak tackling downfield. A gain of 43 yards for Amp Lee. What really hurts the Vikings here is the standpoint of the pursuit that comes from the inside of the defense this way. And watch the block by Roy Foster leading out here in front of Amp Lee. Watch this. One-on-one -on, -one on Lee. Carl Lee the corner. There goes Amp Lee. Now it's just athletic ability and Amp Lee. God-given talent making this happen right here. Now, if you, if you want a pursuer, you want a pursuer number 92 and not number 25. You might get away from 92, but 25 forces him out of, out of, out of bounds with Vincey Glenn. He has 90 yards and now a chance for more on the pitch. Amp Lee making the miss, and he picks up good yardage. Amp Lee with 43 yards on that last carry matches the 49ers high for the year. Ricky Waters had gained 43 on a carry earlier in the year and Amp Lee having a tremendous uh, game just one yard away from the 100 mark. And in talking yesterday to Jesse Sapolo, the 49ers center, he looked at us he goes, look, we get Amp Lee 100 yards, we will win this football game. And when you play against Minnesota in this style of an offense, if you do get a running back 100 yards, that puts such incredible pressure on the pass defense, things start to open up. Tom Rathman has a stinger in his shoulder. They hope he can get back. Lee bounces off the defender. And Bensey Glenn brings him down inside the 10-yard line. They are working. Amp Lee, the rookie, and he picks up five more yards, so he's over the 100 mark. Well, last year, John McVay and his 49er organization drafted Ricky Waters and Amp Lee and figured, hey, we're going to help ourselves. Well, last year, they both went down with an injury. This year, they're getting the production out of these, this duo that they anticipated last year. Ricky Waters hoping to get back next week, needing 15 yards for 1,000 on the year. And nothing gets your shoulder better a lot faster than watching a fellow second-year guy go out there and gain over 100 yards. Ricky Waters will be healed next Saturday. Tom Rathman is back in the game, and Amp Lee dives to about the five-yard line. So Rathman returns to the lineup for the Niners, and Henry Thomas came up back to the defensive line for the Vikings. There's Thomas in a two-yard pickup for Amp Lee. And that was the case, I think, of the 49er offense trying to keep the Minnesota defense honest. They're making that living and making those yards outside following those pulling guards. They were trying to kind of, I don't know, anticipate and fool them up, up in the inside with a quick hitting play. If the Niners keep running the ball, look for it to continue outside. Second and goal, the ball is at the five. Young. And he is hit at about the four-yard line. He'll get a yard. It was Al Noga. And Jack Del Rio, who applied the crunch on Steve Young. And a nice job of getting some quick penetration from Henry Thomas in the middle, which flushes Steve Young out. Then it was just coverage. A good job of coverage. And look up front on the 49er offensive line. Ralph Tam is out. And Boatswain, number 65, is in at right tackle. Ralph Tam with a sprained left knee, so Boatswain is in there. Third and goal from the four-yard line. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Young is sacked. John Randall and Al Noga both in on the play in a loss of nine yards. And the Vikings prevent the touchdown. That is the sixth sack. And this is some quick beaten by the defensive line. 
Guy McIntyre throws a no-hitter on Randall, who gets right by him. And then it's Noga and Dolman and Thomas and everybody else kind of has a, a defensive team meeting right in the middle of Steve Young's back. Six sacks, three of them by Al Noga. And now Mike Kofer will try to give the 49ers a 10-point lead, 26-yard attempt. The kick is good. So George Seifert's Niners, who led 17 to 7 at halftime, now with 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter, are up 20 to 10. Darren Nelson and Keith Henderson. There was Nelson and the kickoff by Kofer. And it'll be returned by Henderson, former 49er. Keith Henderson brings it out beyond the 30-yard line. A fine return as the clock winds down. 24-yard return by Keith Henderson. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The 49ers 20 and the Vikings 10. And our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. This is CBS. You want to see a shot of the 49er offensive line. That's Harry Boatswain, number 65, who's in for Ralph Tam with the injured knee. And this is the key man for the Minnesota Vikings. Can he continue the running game, and can he get the ball to Anthony Carter? First and ten, Hassan Jones in motion. Gannon has plenty of time, but the receivers weren't open. And in and out of the hands of Terry Allen, incomplete. Talk about the job the Niners are doing. Allen has been held to only 22 yards rushing in this game. And he came in at 890 yards on the season. Well, you saw all the time Rich Gannon had in the last play. Let's see where Anthony Carter was. What did he do on that play? Boy, does he look lonely. Maybe somebody on that sideline to keep him company over there, or maybe Rich Gannon to give him the ball because he is completely open. Second down and 10, the ball at the Viking 33. And here is the end around to Anthony Carter. Carter cutting inside. And very close to the first down, might be shy by a yard. It was Pierce Holt and then the nose guard, Michael Carter. They want to get the ball in Anthony Carter's hands some way, and this way picked up nine. Well, from Anthony Carter's standpoint, if they can't see you when you're wide open on one side of the field, bring me in motion and give me the ball. Then you can't ignore me. Good job by Tim Irwin and Brian Habib coming out there and blocking. And then Anthony Carter, you know, he's not the wide receiver he was five years ago when he had that huge game against the 49ers in the playoffs, but he still has the ability to summon some of that stuff up and be a huge factor, and this Viking team needs him to be a factor right now. He caught a 54-yard pass moments ago. Third down and one, and Allen gets the first down and bangs his way into 49er territory. Thane Gash making the tackle and a gain of 11 yards. That's about half of all Allen has gained on the ground before that play. Nice blocking up front from the Minnesota Vikings on that play. Two things, watch the blocking, and second, watch Eric Davis, 25, come up to tackle a 195-pound halfback right there. Mr. Davis, take a seat. Ted Washington is the nose tackle. Carter is out of the game. First down on the 47 and the pass. Again, Anthony Carter was free. Dana Hall was defending, but the pass was thrown high by Rich Gannon. Just a little high by Gannon, but a nice play by Dana Hall coming in and just closing on that ball right at the very end of this play. See, Carter, it's a zone defense. Corner has him up. Safety has him back. Here comes the ball, and here comes Dana Hall. Nice form tackle straight through the player. Hall had a big game and a big blitz against Dan Marino last week. Dennis Brown for Pierce Holt. Up front for the Niners. Second out of 10. A fake end around to Carter. Gannon is looking for any receiver. Takes off. And he got a lot more than he deserved, considering how far back he was pushed. He got six yards on the play. It was Romanowski and Walter on the play. But it wasn't in, well, it hasn't been since the first possession the Vikings have managed a decent screen. They were trying to throw that screen over to the left-hand side to Terry Allen. The 49ers completely smelled that one out, and it was just up to Gannon there to do what he could. 
And it was a nice job by Gannon right there, getting some yards out of things. But he's not going to beat the 49ers with his feet. He's not Steve Young. He's got to do it with his arm. This is a big third down play coming up for the Vikings. They need four yards early here in the fourth quarter. Gannon on a quarterback draw. And he's going to lose yardage. So did that fail? 49ers closed up the middle and then Don Griffin wouldn't let him get outside and a loss of one yard will bring up a fourth and five. Watch the defensive line shove this thing up in the middle. They are not buying in the middle. Nice job by Ted Washington completely closing things down over Randall McDaniel on the, over the left guard position there. And an interesting call by interesting call by the Vikings of not throwing the ball against the 28th rated pass defense in the league. Harry Newsom will kick. And Grant calls for the fair catch on the 15 yard line. 27 yard kick. But the Niners will start from their 15 when we return. This game summary is sponsored by Cutter. Another outstanding day for Steve Young. Could be headed for MVP honors. Amp Lee not only with two touchdowns, but he's gained over 100 yards. Rich Gannon has struggled. He has just misfired today as the Viking quarterback. And if it weren't for their defense with the interception return for a touchdown, they would be out of this game. Well, not an unusual situation of late. Actually, this whole year for Minnesota, the offense struggling. It's up to the defense to make something happen, and that usually means an interception. Or starting field position for Steve Young, and the pass to Amp Lee out of the backfield, getting very little, if anything. And let's say nothing on the play, and it was Henry Thomas right there. And that's sort of an unusual stat you're seeing there on the lower third of your screen. Generally, the 49er receivers excel at running after the catch. Minnesota defense is going to find job of containing that man and the receivers. And Jerry Rice has really been the only guy to get significant yards after the catch. Second and 10 from the 14. And the pass up the middle is too low for Brent Jones. Because the Vikings had him covered with Del Rio and Merriweather. And that will bring up third down. And a good opportunity for this Vikings defense to make the 49ers go three and out and kind of throw them off, get their timing off a little. The Niners look, I don't know, a little goofy right now. They try a little dump pass in the middle. They throw one right at Brent Jones, and he drops it. The Minnesota defense has got to take advantage of that and try to either get a turnover or force a punt and hope Wolfsmeyer, remember, he shanked the last one. They can set good field position up for their offense, stopping this third down. Third down and 10. Young's pass. Knocked away. Todd Scott. On the pass intended for Brent Jones. And that'll bring up fourth down. And the Vikings could find themselves with good field position after this kick. And this Metrodome crowd is starting to get into it. They like what they see defensively. And what they see is a nice job inside out of covering Brent Jones, a go-to guy on third down. Last time, 13 yards for Wilmsmeyer. This is the first time today the 49ers have gone three plays and out. Joe Johnson and Anthony Parker are deep. High snap by Sapporo, and he takes off, and the Vikings will have it inside the five. Vincey Glenn. Major break for the Minnesota Vikings, trailing by 10 points with 11 minutes to play in the game. The, the key there, Ralph Tam out with a sprained knee, Jesse Sapolo in at center. But watch Vincey Glenn coming from the outside. He should not be this free. There is no way Darren Jordan should let him come that free, and that's why Wilsmeyer can't get off the can't get off the punt. It wasn't all the snap. The snap wasn't good, but the blocking was worse. First and goal on the four-yard line for the Vikings. There's Allen. And he is stacked up maybe for no gain. Keep in mind that the only points generated by the Minnesota offense 
was a field goal by Fouad Reves in the third quarter. Ted Washington was the first to get to Allen. Terry Allen has 11 touchdowns rushing this year. All but one of them have been three yards or fewer, so they have set it up for Terry Allen this year. And when Terry Allen's running at his best, he's running behind McDaniel, Zimmerman, Habib. They get their speed movement guys out in front of him and let him make his cut. Second and goal. Here's Allen. He gets to the one. Allen, second in the NFC with 13 touchdowns, all told this year. Again, it was Ted Washington. Well, you're matching up a strength on a strength here. You've got a physical offensive line that can move in the Vikings. And you see Ted Washington coming off the field with that right arm dangling a little bit. And he's a member of a very physical, very quick defensive line for the 49ers. If you have your druthers and everybody's piled up, don't go to the pile. Go where there isn't a pile. Get outside. Well, Dennis Green has two downs to get it over. It is third down on the one-yard line. They're stopped tight. And the give is to Allen, and he's in for the touchdown. dominating offensive lineman I think right now in the NFL is Randall McDaniel. The rare combination of size, speed, and the ability to block on the run. Look at that lead block against Mike Walter, the inside linebacker McDaniel puts in there. There was no one to, to give Terry Allen any contest as he went over the top. Great job by McDaniel. Wad Reves will try to bring the Vikings to within three. The kick is good. It's 20 to 17 and Terry Allen with 14 touchdowns on the year, 12 of them as a runner, most of them from inside the three, and this has been bread and butter for the Minnesota running back this season. And Randy Cross, the Vikings have cut the Niners lead to three. The kickoff to Logan at the three, returning for the Niners. And you know, Randy, it's interesting that the Viking defense, they've been on the field, it seems, throughout this entire game, and even when the Minnesota Vikings scored a touchdown, they didn't get much of a rest. Not really, not <laughs> at all. Quick in, quick out. Great job by this defense, and that's why these games between these two teams are always close, whether it's overtime, whether it's in San Francisco, whether it's in Minnesota, almost always you're looking at games that are decided right at the gun. Last four regular season games decided by three, and this one is a three-point game. Vikings are indicating that the 49ers were are guilty of a false start. False start. 67. How much is the crowd a factor now, Randy? Well, George Seifert and the 49ers practiced yesterday with a lot of crowd noise, but you can't duplicate the noise you get in an indoor stadium, even with speakers. And I found it sort of not naive, almost arrogant of the team not to really worry about crowd noise, not to have a silent snap in. They don't think this can intimidate them. First down and 15, and the pitch is to Ampley, and he's cut down. Carl Lee. Gain of two yards. And you see Terry, saw Terry Allen on the sideline waving that towel. He knows darn well the best offense the Minnesota Vikings have right now is an, is an aggressive, strong defense to set Terry Allen and Rich Gannon and that whole Viking offense up with some opportunities to get the ball back in good field position. Amp Lee is split wide. Second down and 13 in the pass to Brent Jones underneath. And that'll bring up third and about six. Merriweather and Del Rio in on the stop with less than eight and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. 
The Vikings know that if they can come from behind and win, they capture the NFC Central. If they don't, the pressure builds for their final two games against the Steelers and Packers. And if you're George Seifert here and your offense seems to be a little bit struggling after the last two possessions, the biggest cure and the best cure for a struggling 49er offense is getting the ball in the hands of number 80, Jerry Rice, on a month situation for a first. Third down and six. And Young is back. Carlos Jenkins. That's number six, seven on the game. That there's a penalty marker down. So before the Vikings can finish celebrating, well, they can go on and celebrating. That's a holding call against the Niners. Seven sacks on the day by the Minnesota defense. Watch this defense attack. Carlos Jenkins, top of the screen. Al Noga, offsides, not called. Great job by the Minnesota defense of attacking. And this is the style of defense Tony Dungy has brought here to Minnesota. So it's fourth down, and a job well done by the Minnesota defense. They have kept them in the game. Al Noga has three of the seven sacks. The last time Wilmsmeyer punted from the goal line, there was a high snap from Sokolo. Wilmsmeyer was forced to run and was trapped at his own four. This time he gets it off, and it's a great kick. Parker going back. And it's Anthony Parker on the return for Minnesota. And he'll bring it out to the 41 of the Vikings with 7.29 remaining in the fourth quarter. But the Minnesota defense, which has been the trademark of this team all year long, has set things up for the offense. You were on a Honda commercial a few years ago, right? Three, but the fourth quarter has been Minnesota's best quarter, leading the National Football League with 116 points in the final quarter. You see the 49ers are second. And those 116 points for the Minnesota Vikings are set up by a defense that puts them in situations to score or scores touchdowns themselves. Nice job by Dungy's defense. Can Gannon in this offense effectively throw the ball in the air? Roger Craig is in the lineup. First and ten on the 41, and it's going to be Craig on the carry. Here he is, bouncing off defenders. You cannot bring Roger Craig down on your first hit. He got only two yards on that play. Whistle it blown, so it is still Viking ball. Romanowski and Holt made the play, and they earned their stripes with that tackle. But it's impossible to wrap Roger Craig up unless you get him going sideways because when you get him going at you, all you see are kneecaps and forehead because he's got those knees pumping and you can't wrap those up. Second down and eight. Jordan lines up strong side to the left. Gannon looking one way has Craig out of the backfield but he'll be stuffed immediately at the 45 by Mike Walter will bring up a third and five, maybe more, for the Vikings. And the 49er defense will give Gannon that short garbage for the rest of this fourth quarter if that's what he has to take because down the field they're covering extremely well, but that is where Rich Gannon needs to get this ball and he needs to get it into the hands of the only money big-time guy he's got right now. That's Anthony Carter. you got to get the ball to Carter because the rest of the receivers have been a complete non-factor. Carter lines up to the top of your screen. Third down and five. Gannon is going to run, and he's going to make it. First down for the Vikings in the 49er territory. Hanks and Romanowski after a gain of seven. He's a running threat, is Gannon. And the 49er defense does one job well and one not well. They all fill up. They rush. They come forward. You saw Merton Hanks there overcommit filling, and Gannon makes a pay with that first down. And Jeff Fisher, their defensive back coach, has got to be thinking right now, what else do I have to do? We're covering him down the field. We've got to wrap him up. First and 10 Vikings on the Niners 47, less than five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And the quick hit. Anthony Carter tries to make a diving catch and can't do it. It was Tim Harris who got a hand on it. 
And that'll bring up second down. And Gannon had that play. He was Anthony Carter was wide open. He threw that one out in the flat, and, and for the, luckily for the Niners, they batted that one down. Dallas and Washington, the big clash, and their first meeting, of course, since the opening game of the year. The Redskins fighting for the playoffs. Cowboys 11-2, just like the 49ers, and a big one to follow here on CBS. Second down and 10. And no one there on the pitch, and Gannon has to run, and Merton Hanks will ride him out of bounds. So that was a busted play. Craig obviously was supposed to be the man, and Gannon picked up two yards on the play. That's too bad you almost couldn't have a, a camera right in Rich Gannon's face now, because he's turning around, and all of a sudden it's like, I got a what? Okay, I'll try it, and Hanks does a good job of pursuing. But this is an extremely important third down play for Rich Gannon in this offense. They've got to get a first down here. They've got to keep the momentum they've got going. They've got a little something working for Denny Green here for the Vikings. They've got to get the ball to a receiver, a wide receiver. <laughs> Emphasize wide. Hassan Jones wide to the bottom of your picture on third down and eight. Gannon's pass up the middle. And Anthony Carter makes the reception and a first down at the 31, and the Vikings are in field goal range with 4.30 remaining. Hanks on the stop. And one of the great things a young receiver has first to learn in the NFL is when you get a zone defense, you got to know where the spots are. you got to know where the soft spots are. And when you feel a soft spot, sit down and let your quarterback hit you. And that's exactly what Anthony Carter did. He got in the seam of that zone, presented a nice target to Gannon, and went down for that ball. Terry Allen is in for Roger Craig. First down on the 31 of San Francisco. It's Terry Allen up the middle, and very little there. Still trying to get an extra yard or so. Allen will have to be content with a three-yard pickup. Ted Washington and Bill Romanowski on the tackle with under four minutes remaining. And you mentioned, Dick, importantly, Fowl Dreves is as well inside his field goal range. So George Seifert is now in a situation where I think he's got to take a shot. He's got to take a chance because he's looking at being tied here. Even if he stops, he stops the Vikings two more or two more plays. He's looking at being all tied up. And the Vikings are looking ahead for a defensive foray next time. Second down and seven. Gannon. And that is a bad sack for the Vikings because that will knock. Minnesota perhaps out of field goal range. Gannon is chewing a chance to throw the ball away, loses six yards on the sack, and the clock continues to run as we wind down to three minutes remaining. Pierce Holt and Tim Harris close down. What that sets up for Minnesota is ideally, yes, you want a first down, but you got to get at least seven yards on this next play because the last thing you really wanted to do on that last play was have your quarterback peel that ball and eat it. Third down and 14. You mentioned they don't need all 14 to try to tie the game. Harris is on game. And the whistle had blown. No fumble. But the 49ers got what they wanted out of it. They have knocked the Vikings out of field goal range. A loss of 13 yards on the sack by Tim Harris. And that really will put a crimp in Minnesota's hopes here. And rightfully, Denny Green cannot be happy because just when the offensive line on one possession was looking good, on the next possession, they get dominated on consecutive plays by the defensive line of the 49ers. So Harry Newsom will have to kick it away with 2.20 remaining. Alan Grant is back deep. He'll call for the fair catch at the 10-yard line. That is really a risky situation at the 10 with a lot of purple jerseys forging in on you. So the score is 20 to 17 and now the Vikings are maybe in a position Randy with 213 to go to use some of their timeouts on defense. They also have the stoppage at the two minute mark. This is what the 49ers refer to as their four minute drill four minute situation. There's two minute and 13 seconds left. Minnesota has their timeouts. There's another timeout at the two minute warning in 13 seconds. But the 49ers practice this a couple times a week and constantly in training camp. The idea of this is to run the ball, short possession passes, and go away with the clock. They 
start from the 10 yard line and Amp Lee with a carry. And this is the last thing the Vikings need a real solid gain on first down. Seven yards by Amp Lee, Todd Scott, and Merriweather on the tackle. And with 2.05 remaining, the Vikings use the first of their three timeouts. It is imperative if you're looking from the Minnesota standpoint and they need a win to wrap up the division that they prevent the 49ers from getting a first down. That won't be easy. And this is a situation where you have no choice now. You have got to take chances. Timeouts remaining. Two by the Vikings and three by the 49ers. While we have a moment, we want to remind This ball game's over. Second down and three. Now let's see. Amp Lee was the ball carrier. Al Noga had moved and Harry Boatswain. Well, Noga's trying to sell to the referees the fact that Boatswain moved. Boatswain filling in for the injured Ralph Tam, who's playing for Harris Barton. Encroachment, defense, prior to the snap. Pointed the it's wrong still way. still second down. No play. He pointed the wrong way. <laughs> Steve Young's over there. Encroachment, defense, no play. Still second down. Steve Young got right in Greer's face and said, defense is over there. They're on the other side. You see George Siebert's reaction. He almost was bowled over by that indication by Greer. Hey, he's saying that ball was snapped. You read his lips there. He says, no time ran off the clock. There was 2.05, but it was an encroachment foul. Before the ball was ever snapped, Noga made contact with the offensive player. First down and 10 on the 23-yard line. This has been a frustrating day for Denny Green, who was hoping his team offensively could get back into field goal range to tie it up. Now it's in the Niners' hands. And Amp Lee going outside. Amp Lee's 21st carry of the game. He has gained 114 yards today and is stopped by Carlos Jenkins. And now we're down to our two-minute warning here at the Metrodome. 20 to 17, the Niners trying to... The Niners, one more first down, and this thing's over. Timeout, Vikings. Make it clear. Make it colorful. Make it both. The Desk Jet 550C. With Desk Jet printers from Hewlett Packard, it's easy to make it happen. We make cow dolls, we make nachos. That game by Lee, as you pointed out, he could have been pushed out of bounds, stayed in play, and now the Vikings are down to one timeout remaining, and the Niners are up to their own 40. What they need is Minnesota and Danny Green need to make something happen. It's really up to the coaches. Is that the Tony Dungy up in the booth? They've got to call something to make a big play, but the 49ers will give the ball to a back up the middle and try to run this thing out. Here's Amp Lee protecting the football. Carlos Jenkins on the tackle. Vikings are now going to use their final timeout. We have a minute and 32 seconds remaining. It'll be second and long for the 49ers. But what a day for Amp Lee and for Dennis Green. Problems continue for the Vikings if they don't pull out this game. They lost to Philadelphia last week. They don't have many wins against successful teams in the NFL, Randy, and this was a game they really needed at home against the best. Well, what that effectively does really to the Minnesota Vikings right here is says that even if they stop the 49ers, they'll get the ball back with about 10, 15, 20 seconds left, and that's just not enough, I don't think, in this situation. They have got to cause a turnover. They've got to do something to disrupt. If they have to be offsides, you've got to be offsides. You know, Denny, Denny Green has done a marvelous job here in Minnesota. His team battled back. They were being dominated. They got right back into this ball game. It's nothing to be down about in the situation they're in right now. And the last thing they need to do from a team standpoint is start to doubt themselves and their system. They can still make something happen. Second down and seven from the 43. The Vikings are out of timeout. Rathman goes down and protects the ball. Keep in mind that the Vikings can still capture the NFC Central 
with a loss by the Green Bay Packers tonight against the Houston Oilers. So the division championship is still within their grasp, but the one thing you want to do is be at your peak when the playoffs come. And speaking of being at your peak when the playoffs come, two teams that hope to be just that way, the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins, coming up next here on CBS. And we've seen the leading team in the league in the last five years in December, the 49ers, appear to come up come away here in Minnesota with a win and the number two team in the NFL in the month of December are the Washington Redskins and Dick we saw we saw the Redskins and they're a team that are starting to peak and starting to roll I think at the perfect time they're getting healthy and that means dangerous things 49ers now have called a timeout to discuss exactly what they will do with 43 seconds remaining and Minnesota out of timeouts. Very little hope, and as you say, try to cause a turnover, but 49ers are uh, aware of that, and they've been protecting the ball effectively. Well, what, what you do in this situation is you fall on the ball, and then you take a penalty with about six seconds left in the game, and then you punt the ball out of bounds preferably, and Minnesota will have one play more than likely at the end of this game to try to make something happen. But uh, the chances of that happening are extremely remote. 49ers headed for their sixth straight victory. That's the longest current winning streak in the NFL. Earlier in the year, they had won five in a row. Interesting that on a day that Rich Gannon struggled, Wade Wilson threw five touchdown passes for the Atlanta Falcons. He was let go by the Minnesota Vikings. Lee with 134 yards rushing. He scored two touchdowns today, and the 49ers, as they've done so often, as you well remember, Randy, so successful in big games on the road. And they, they've been awful tough, especially, you say, on the road. People forget about the fact they have one of the best home records also. But George Seifert, you cannot say Please enough about the job right that George Seifert has Thank done you. here with the 49ers. He is now one of the top two or three coaches in the NFL. He was the fastest coach to 50 wins. And with the strength of this team and organization, he may be the fastest coach ever to 100 wins. He's had a lot of changes in his staff. He's had to operate with a lot of different quarterbacks. So George Seifert has kept the beat going for the 49ers, who have won by a score of 20 to 17 over the Vikings. 12 and 2 on the year for Dennis Green and the Vikings, 9 and 5. So Minnesota still needs some help to wrap up the division and the 49ers moving toward the best record and home field advantage in the NFC playoffs. For Randy Cross, Dick Stockton saying so long from the Metrodome. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Terry Bradshaw. Welcome back. Uh, those, for those of you who are watching Atlanta and Tampa Bay and San Francisco and Minnesota, and coming up next, since this is a doubleheader day here on CBS, Absolutely. most of you will be watching the Dallas Cowboys at RFK Stadium to meet the Washington Redskins. Also on tap today, Philadelphia at Seattle and New Orleans in Anaheim to play the Los Angeles Rams. Let's run down the scores and the highlights for you. At the Metrodome, the 49ers over the Minnesota Vikings by a score of 20 to 17. Steve Young picked off early on by Audrey McMillan and he returns 51 yards for a touchdown and the Vikings led at this point by a score of 7 to 3. Ricky Waters was watching on the sidelines and he saw Amp Lee fill in pretty well for him today. Amp Lee had 135 yards rushing. This Viking defense gave up over 200 yards rushing last week. Lee filling in at a heck of a job today, Greg. Rich Gannon had his problems. Lamp, uh, Amp Lee goes 43 yards there and Rich Gannon Tim Harris all over him here. He didn't get much help. He wasn't even blocked. Play action going to the blind side. If no one blocks the support, that's what's going to happen. Harris sitting right there waiting on Gannon. Fourth quarter, 20 to 10 score. Klaus Wilmsmeyer can't get it away. He is sacked by Vincey Glenn at his own four-yard line, and the Vikings turn that around into a one-yard touchdown run by Terry Allen to make it 20 to 17. Vikings coming back, and Rich Gannon just flat out makes a mistake. Yeah, you, you know, in a situation like this where the game is on the line, you're in field goal position. As a quarterback, you say no interceptions or fumbles, 
but you also say, if I get pressure, I am going to get rid of this football. Two sacks in a row, inexcusable. You have to get rid of the, of the football, Greg. That cost them an opportunity to tie the football game up. The Vikings can still win the NFC Central Division with a loss by the Green Bay Packers tonight against the Houston Oilers. For the first time all season, the Vikings have now lost two in a row. In Chicago, the Bears lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 30-6 to in the final moments at Soldier Field. Great day for the Chicago defense and for Mike Singletary. They have held the Pittsburgh Steelers down and Barry Foster just 24 yards. The Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions, the Lions beating the Browns 24 to 14. In Cleveland, the warehouse. Hey, Andre Ware had himself a pretty good day today. Not bad at all. Look at this. Here's a guy finally getting a chance coming out of the run and shoot at Houston. Nice shot. There's Perriman. Breaks the tackle. Big, strong wide receiver in for the touchdown. And Andre Ware can run the football, too. On the quarterback draw, look at him take off and cut to the outside. 33 yards by the time he's all done. Good day for Andre Ware. Bernie Kosar, well, this is an awful tough pass to complete. This, this, I mean, if ugly it could be ugly. described, that are ugly, Greg. 24 to 14, and with that defeat to the Cleveland Browns, it puts the Buffalo Bills into the playoffs, and uh, the Buffalo Bills had to clinch the playoff berth either by winning or a Chargers, Browns, Chiefs, or Oilers loss, so the Cleveland Browns lose. The Buffalo Bills are in 24-14 Lions over the Browns. Kansas City Chiefs have come from behind and now lead the Patriots with two minutes to play, 27 to 20. The Atlanta Falcons, five touchdown passes from Wade Wilson. They beat Tampa Bay and the Jets and the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts lead at 10-6. Doubleheader games coming your way here on CBS. We'll be back at halftime and again with more updates throughout the day. Enjoy game two, everyone.